Okay, this is going to be a quick five-sided conversational programming demo using the Herco WinMax software. What I have set up is a six inch by six inch by six inch square cube. The top center of this block is my zero point. And I'm going to put some kind of feature on the top here, maybe a frame or, or something like that. Then I'm going to put a feature on the front side and on the right side and show you how to use uh, the conversational transform plane to control origin points and um, the rotations uh, to do the work on all these sides. So the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to go in and do, I'm just going to mill a simple circle on the top of the part. The center of the block is 0, 0, so that will be the center point. Let's do a 4 inch diameter, so a 2 inch radius, we'll go point 0.1 above. Let's make it a half inch deep. Use tool 1, which is a half inch end mill. And we're going to make that a pocket boundary. Now when I go draw, you'll see that we have a circle on the top of the part, again, just for reference. <clears throat> now I'm going to put a three-sided polygon or a triangle here on the front side of this part. So how do we do that? First thing we need to do is programming anything on the front side of the part while I am referencing the top of the part doesn't really make any sense. So the first thing we need to do is temporarily relocate our origin point. And I'm going to move it to this bottom left corner of that front side. So down down here on what would be the bottom left corner of the front. The next thing we'll need to do is rotate the work plane so it's perpendicular to this front side of the part. We do both of those with a conversational block called transform plane. So the way I do that is I'm going to go to my program, next block, rotary transform planes, and I'm going to do a transform plane. In this block, it gives me some fields over here on the left side to relocate my origin point, and it gives me some rotation angles in these fields here in the middle that will allow me to rotate the work plane. So first of all, I need to get some values to put in these origin point fields, and they're going to be just measured values from the original zero point to where I want to move it to. So if we go back to our graphic screen, and we look at the X, Y, and Z, the X being this red axis here, Y will be green and Z is blue, I need to tell, tell the control how far is it from this first point to my new point. Well, I'm going to move negative 3 inches in X, I'm going to move negative 3 inches in Y, and I'm going to move negative 6 inches in Z, and that's going to move my zero point down to that corner where I want it. So I physically put those numbers in there, minus 3, minus 3, and minus 6. So now I've temporarily relocated my origin point. Now I need to rotate the work plane. Well, if I was thinking about rotating the tool, because we never think about how the machine's going to move, we always program the tool moving around the part. If it was vertical here in this, on the z-axis, perpendicular to this top side, and I want to rotate it so it's perpendicular to the front, I'm going to rotate around the x-axis. It's going to be an a-axis move, and it's going to go from pointing straight up to pointing straight out in the front. That's around the x-axis. So I'm going to go to my rotation angles. I'm going to rotate about the x positive to the front side, positive 90 degrees. So now, with the filling out of these fields, I have relocated origin point and rotated the work plane. So when I go to my next block, milling, polygon, I said I'm going to do a three-sided polygon. The front left corner of this side is going to be my zero point. So the center of this three-sided polygon will be 3 inches in X positive and 3 inches positive in Y. I'm going to do the side length method of sizing this, and I'm going to make these 4-inch long sides. 
I don't need to rotate it. The orientation, the normal upright orientation is going to be fine. I'm going to wrap it to 100 thousandths above the part. Let's go down 375 for our depth. Let's use tool number 5, which is a 3 8 in mil. Let's make that a pocket boundary. Now, everything that I do from this point on in this program is going to be referencing that new origin point and this new work plane until I insert a transform plane end. So if I go back to my program, the mill circle is going to be on the top of the part. Here's a transform plane moving us to the front. Every block that follows that will be on the front side of the part until it sees a transform plane end, and then we will revert back to the original zero. So if I go here to my draw screen and I draw this, I'm going to get a circle on the front, and hopefully we're going to get a triangle on the front side of the part. Now to do something on the right side, let's just do a um, four-sided polygon. I would go to my next block. It's going to be another transform plane. This time, I want to move it to this back corner. So the bottom back corner corner of the right side down here. So that's going to be a positive x of 3, positive y of 3, and a negative 6 in z. So x3, y3, negative 6 in z. So I put those values in. 3, 3, minus 6. This time I'm going to rotate around the y-axis to the right side. Positive 90 degrees. So I'm going to rotate around the Y 90. And I just do my programming from that point. Milling, polygon. It's going to be a four sided polygon, we said. The center is going to be minus 3, minus 3. Let's make the same side length, we'll make them four inches long. Wrap it to point 0.1. Let's go down a uh, half inch this time using tool 1. Pocket boundary. And we're going to then end the transform plane. So I should have a square or a four sided polygon milled on the middle of the right side. So it's just that easy. We would continue to then incrementally go from the original zero to the new origin point and rotate the work plane for any corresponding side that we want.